and my hope for humanity dwindles every second I do this video. Racism. Yeah, it affects herbs and plants too. And it's a system of malicious beliefs that's passed down from generation to generation, creating this willful ignorance of the humanity of other people. And so I think it's very important that we mention that systemic racism takes many different forms, and that includes plants. And neglecting to update plant names to show more respect for blacks, Native Americans, or any other group that's been slighted by this oversight is just plain wrong. Well, now that we're clear about that, let's get down and dirty and talk about these nasty plant names that some are far worse than others. Haha, <laughs> yeah. No real order here as they're all horrible and shouldn't exist anymore. That said, I'm gonna start it off and finish with some real doozies that'll turn your blood like that. You get the idea, right? So, first off is not the N-word, it's the K-word. And this is specifically associated with the Makrit or Thai Lime. This word is considered one of the most offensive racial slurs in South Africa. It is the N-word of South Africa. Make no qualms about it. So it's really surprising that it gets bandied around so easily that people know the N-word. They really need to know the K-word. This term actually comes from Southeast Asia, where there were a group of non-Muslims that were called a variation of this, which means infidel or pagan. And these people, like the black South Africans, are persecuted for being perceived as dirty, uneducated, and ugly. The K-word is linked to Makrit limes, unfortunately, because some consider its bumpy, mottled look to be, how do I say this nicely, not as pretty as other fruits. That's racism for you, not rooted in anything sensible, just weird, frivolous partialities. Coming from similar origins to the K-word is the C-word, which is still found in over 200 plant names. Black Eyed Susan's made my list for the worst name herbs, and surprise, Black Eye and the other things I mentioned in that list aren't the worst things it's really been called by. Sadly, black-eyed Susans aren't the only plant that's been called this. So have these poor sods, including Echinacea, which has also been called Kansas, and Wild Neverhead. Oh. I'm not actually gonna say that word. <clears throat> what? They're calling me, so I gotta... <laughs> Bye! Hey Eric, I thought you were saving the really bad ones until the end, but now you're just jumping right in there with the N-word. Joy of joys, it can get worse. Well, that's racism for you too. As nonsensical as it is, the atrocities carried out under racist beliefs are staggering in both their depth and breadth of horrificness. Well, let's see how this goes here now that I've got tons of sun coming in. This was actually an, my initial plan was to film out here because it was supposed to be cloudy all day. Then it was all rainy, now it's all over sunny. The world is working with me so well. Hello, Dale. Mm. That's gonna lead me right into another N-word slang for Brazil nuts, of all things. There's actually three N-word slangs that Brazil nuts have been called by. Apparently I can't film outside today because it's now too windy out here. It is just not cool. How am I supposed to show you all my sexy herbs if I can't film outside? Darn it. Eric is sad. According to what I could find, examples of usage of the Ento word to describe Brazil nuts can be found as early as 1896. And amazingly, this term still hasn't died out today. I found various articles on the internet talking about how people still use it today in 2024. I mean, how is this possible when it was outlawed from general vernacular in the 1980s? Systemic racism, baby. Okay. Is this my life now? Just a series of non-stop filming gaffes and trouble? Ah, oh. okay, find your zen, find your herb piece. Now this next racist herb name is more of a uh, weird blunder or controversy. It's a bit tricky, here's why. Apparently there was this big hubbub in 2007 on the BBC Radio 4's Gardener's Question Time. Traditionally known as Purple Bellvine, uh, one of the guests mentioned how it's also called Black Man's Willy, which led to some racist remarks and sexual innuendo that weren't kept in check very well. Even the host tried to defend all of this, <laughs> saying it wasn't racist because there's many plant names out there in the world that are descriptive, like bluebells. And this led to a big outrage that forced the BBC to issue an apology to its viewers, which caused another backlash by the racist folks who questioned whether it's even need to, there's even a need to apologize. Is there? I don't know. Yes, there is. There is a need to apologize, if for nothing else than calling this out as a racist name, which it is, descriptive or not. Another strange aspect of this story is that there's a question as to whether Black Man's Willy has been used historically at all. I and mean, there's no references that I or lots of other people could find on the internet or other books that say it's been used before 2007 in this show. Guess what? Thanks to Gardner's Question Time, it's in use now. 
That brings me to another N-word related name that many people don't realize is related to the N-word. If that makes sense, because for a second there it didn't make sense in my own mind. Hopefully it makes sense. And this is not because of the common name Black Whorehound, which I can see why you would think that. It's because of its biological name. As this is one of the many biological names that we have thanks to White Colonials. And I'm not saying that in a nice way. We're calling them out on this show today. There's an entire genus of plants that's named after a white plantation and slave owner and very anti-abolitionist guy. I need some tea. How is this possible? Because the ICN and other taxonomy groups believe, above all else, instability. Their official stance is they won't change a name unless there's a good taxonomic reason for changing it. Oh, so they're kind of racist or ignorant and don't really care. You can make a case for that. They are certainly upholding a systemic racist nomenclature for fear of change and the sake of convenience. Yeah. To put it bluntly, the whole system of taxonomy, which was started in the 18th century, has systemically whitewashed most indigenous people's names for herbs. Where was I? Right, Black Whorehound. This is racist because this word is actually another form of the N-word. True, it's only been used in rare cases and didn't really show up until the 1930s as a racist term. That said, multiple historical sources back up that it has been used in racist terminology. It's crazy just how many plants bear the name Indian in them. Was I the only kid when growing up who thought, hey, why are the Native Americans called Indians when uh, India is in Asia? Comments. There is a monster list of suspect, whitewashed, and all the way truly racist terms used in plant names against indigenous Americans. And I'm including Alaska natives in this list because, in case you didn't realize it, Eskimo isn't some cutesy colloquialism. It's a slur against Alaska natives. In truth, the biggest problem for indigenous people across the globe is the whitewashing of their herb names. In a 2019 study, a group of New Zealand researchers found that of the 80,000 species native to New Zealand, fewer than 1,300 have scientific names derived from the Maori language of New Zealand. And they all started with Maori names. And the same can easily be said of all the herbs and plants native to America as well. While there are exceptions and there are certain times that Indian is used in a homage to the Native Americans, most of the time the names that are used are downright offensive or just plain colonial trash that has been changed from its original name. And there's no reason for those names to be used anymore. Guess what? There's still more inward nastiness when it comes to herbs and plants. Hooray. And I hope for humanity dwindles every second I do this video. But no, it shows evolution, slow that it may be as there's this big list of names that these plants aren't called by anymore, thankfully. Please tell me people aren't calling these plants by these names anymore, or I might just lose all hope in humanity. Another couple of groups that often get defamed are the Jews and Gypsies. I just realized they didn't have enough green in this shot and decided that I'd make things slightly prettier to spruce up this horrible topic. I can't finish shooting? You're just gonna sit here and lick my thumb for three minutes? Maybe I should have had some catnip to enjoy myself as well. The most famous of these plants is the one still called the Wandering Jew. If you don't know the myth of the Wandering Jew, yes, it's anti-Semitic. It goes back to the 13th century. I know a lot of people have tried to change this over the years, but that's where it comes from. This, of course, isn't the only plant with Jew in the name. Luckily, some of them are considered positive, like Jew's Malo, which is actually believed to be the plant referenced in the Bible and the Book of Job, and was actually a popular food amongst ancient Egyptian Jews. Unfortunately, other names like Jew's Thorn, Gypsy Braid, and Jew Cherry, not so nice in their references. There are lots of other names across the globe with bad connotations and racism evolved against other peoples. I'm sure there's even even more names than this out there that just don't want to see the light of day. I mean, people don't want to talk about these racist plants at parties, if you know what I mean. I even did tons of research and it's like pulling teeth and nails to try and find these names out. You know, that or you have to do some covert wiretapping in order to make it work. Finally, that brings us to the poor unfortunate Diffenbachia, otherwise known as Dumb Cane. Yeah, you actually do a search, it's gonna come up known as Dumb Cane right on the front page. And I left this one to last, cause while the name doesn't necessarily sound too bad on the surface, what's been done with this plant makes it really quite atrocious. You said it, Mary. You see, Diffenbachia contains lots of calcium oxalate crystals, which not only lead to kidney stones, but if you ingest them orally, can cause painful swelling of the mouth and throat, along with excessive drooling. Their 
thereby rendering the person speechless. And because of this ability, this plant's been used to poison arrows of peoples in the Amazon. That's not too bad, I guess. And to punish slaves in the Caribbean. Yeah, that's not very... And it was even almost used by Nazi Heinrich Himmler to sterilize and torture prisoners. Luckily, the shipping of the plants from South America didn't work out. I'm sure I've missed some plants and herbs in this list. If there's one you're really interested in, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear it. The point I was really wanting to make with this video is that while some people say names don't hurt, uh, when you're dealing with things like whitewashing and racist defamation, they really do perpetuate negative stereotypes and they need to be eliminated. I mean, we need to be better as humans. And if we want to call ourselves higher life forms, then we need to develop our empathy and benevolence and not encourage hate and division. It just sounds good, doesn't it? Or if you're not feeling the love yet, here's some more controversy for you. Please be kind. Take care of each other and do your part to eliminate systemic racism wherever you find it.